Brothers and sisters, last week we, we saw Jesus address the Pharisees who were so caught up in their own righteousness and traditions that they missed the presence of the Messiah among them. This week we will see Jesus ad address two significant events. One will be the disciples picking grain on the Sabbath and Jesus healing a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath. These passages emphasize the tension between rigid interpretation and the compassionate actions that it takes to fulfill God's law. So if you would, ask that you would stand with me for the reading of God's word. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark chapter two. We'll read verses 22 through Mark 3, 6. On the Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of the grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God in the time of Abathor the high priest and ate the bread of the present, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And he, again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, come here. And he said to them, is it lawful? Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at the hardness of heart, and said to the man, scratch out your hand. He stretched out his hand, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll talk from the subject today. It is always the right time to do what is right. The Sabbath is first introduced in the book of Genesis. It was after God had created heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day after creating everything, he rested. So just in case you don't remember, let me give you a, a little little history from the beginning. On the first day, he created light. On the second day, he created the skies. On the third day, he created the land, the sea, and the vegetation. And on the fourth day, he created the sun, moon, and stars. On the fifth day, he created sea creatures and birds. On the sixth day, he created the land animals and humans. And on the seventh day, he rested. He rested from all his work, and, and he said he blessed the seventh day and made it holy because it was the day that he rests from all his creation work. So that's when the Sabbath first came, was when, when, Jesus, when God finished all that he was doing, he rests on the seventh day. Then we will see where the Sabbath was established. It was established in the Ten Commandments, given to Moses on Mount Sinai. It's the Fourth Commandment. And it instructed the Israelites to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. What it was emphasizing is, is that the Sabbath is to rest from the labors and, and commemorating what God had done. God himself had rested after creation. And it was also a reminder of the covenant of God with his people. So when we think about the Sabbath, we celebrate the Sabbath on a Sunday. But... Sunday only became the day after Christ res was resurrected from the grave. Prior to that, they celebrated on Saturday. So it was after Christ was risen from the grave 
that the Christian church began to uh, celebrate the Sabbath on a Sunday. And the Sabbath is simply for, for us as Christians, is a typical day of attending church, uh, for church services, worship, and resting and spending time with our families. That's what most of us do on Sabbath. And so we look at this picture, we realize that the Pharisees were strict about tradition, they were strict about the law. So they were more concerned with the legalistic aspect of the Sabbath than they were about resting. They were kind of like policing others to make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. So here is Jesus and his disciples and they are walking through the grain field and they pluck heads of grain. Now, if you guys remember that all we have seen throughout this uh, reading thus far is that the disciples were always looking for a way to trap Jesus. They were asking questions, not really because they wanted the answer. They were asking questions because they wanted to, to trap Jesus. And anytime Jesus showed up, y'all, there were questions. Y'all remember me pointing that out last week? There are always questions around what's going on with Jesus. Why aren't your disciples fasting like John's disciples and everybody else? What's going on here? So here it is. The disciples are walking through the grain field and they decide to pick, pick corn. It's kind of like us, you know, you're walking, you ever been in an apple orchard or you ever been uh, where, uh, a vineyard and you're walking through here? Listen, you know that you're not supposed to pick any grapes or at least you're not supposed to eat them till you pay for them, you know. But, but it's kind of hard, isn't it? You're walking through there, you grab one, you throw it in and look around to make sure nobody's watching. The disciples didn't have to look over their shoulder. You want to know why? Because Jesus was with them. The Messiah was with them. So they see this Jesus' disciples pick, pick um, uh, a pluck a heads of the grain, and they said, look, what are they doing? What are they doing? Why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And so Jesus does not really address them with an answer. Again, Jesus gives them an answer in a form of a question. Let's look at what he said. And he said to, and he said to them, have you not read? I think Jesus was throwing a little shade here. It, listen, Jesus was throwing shade because they knew the law. The Pharisees knew the law. So Jesus said, have you not read? In other words, he's saying, don't you know? Don't you know what David did when he was in need? when he was hungry and those that were with him. Does everybody remember that story, what happened? David is running for his life. He is fleeing from Saul and, and in desperation, he runs into Abimelech the priest at the tabernacle and he asks for bread. Now he's hungry, so he goes and he asks for bread and the priest said, all we got here is the showbread. And only, and look, only, only the high priest can have it, but he gives it to David. He gives it to David, and David gives it to his men. Brothers and sisters, that does not answer the question that they have asked Jesus. That doesn't answer the question. They want to know why they're doing it. Why are your disciples violating the law on the Sabbath? Because the Sabbath meant you didn't pick grain on the Sabbath. You, 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 didn't do, you didn't do anything on the Sabbath. You basically rest. You went to worship and you rest. Why are your disciples on this Sabbath day, why do they feel like they can go and pluck grain when nobody else can? So they're, they're trying to trap him. So Jesus is, why, why, why do we think Jesus is, uh, gives this is an example of what, what David did and his man? Anybody want to take a guess? This is question and answer. It's the only time this is going to happen. The only time it's going to happen today. Question that happens. Question. He, he, listen. Listen. He, listen. He a greater David. But what, what Jesus is trying to highlight is that human need. Human need is more important than your tradition. Human need is more important than your legalistic uh, uh, perceptions on how things should be. So if somebody is hungry, and, and, and they need food to eat. 
Brothers and sisters, ain't no time for us to be legal. Ain't no time for us to be wrapped in our tradition. This is what Jesus is trying to let them know. Listen, if they are hungry, what's wrong with them plucking something? Now listen, we don't get carried away. I don't want us to think that we can just violate anything. We can make up rules as we go. What Jesus is doing is actually showing them what the real intent of the law was. Amen? I, I want to be careful. That don't mean that we get to start doing stuff and then be saying, well, Jesus did it. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let me help you. We are not Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Jesus was trying to show them what the intent of the law was. It is so easy, brothers and sisters, that we can get caught up in the black and white that, that we don't really see what's truly happening. The, the Pharisees were showing us time and time again that they were missing Jesus. Jesus had already, we talked about this last week, that the law was intended to point people to him. Amen? And they were missing it. They wanted to know why, why aren't they fasting? Listen, how can they fast when the bridegroom is with them? Jesus is here. They were missing Jesus hand over foot, left and right, brothers and sisters. So Jesus is saying to them that human needs and well-being should, should take precedence over your strict legal observations. Amen? Isn't that good news? That's good news for somebody, brothers and sisters. That if somebody has a need, it, it, there's a passage that says that if somebody knocks on your door at, late at night it, and you tell them, come back in the morning, but their need is right now. Amen? But what you're saying, this is time for sleep. What they're saying is that I'm in need. Amen? So look, look, how, look how Jesus goes on. He responds further. He says this. Now, this, this, is, this is good. Because... The Pharisees are stuck on trying to make sure that people followed all of the law. Look what Jesus says to them. After he tells them what David did, then he says, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. That's deep, brothers. That, that, that is deep. He says the Sabbath is made for man and not man for Sabbath. What he was saying is that God gifted man the Sabbath. Amen? He gifted that to man. He gifted that. He, he put in, in, in the law room for man to rest. Room for man to commune with him. Room for us to commune with, amongst our family. So that's what he's saying, that in this that he made Sabbath so man could rest. He made Sabbath so man can worship. Isn't that good, brothers and sisters? Today, today ought to be our day where we not only come together to worship and visit with one another, but most importantly, it is about worshiping him. Amen? And resting. So he wanted them to see that you're missing it. It's missing. This Sabbath is not about burdening people with what they are doing and what they're not doing. I had a great conversation a couple Sundays ago, me, Daryl, and Orlando talking about the Sabbath, how important the Sabbath is. Amen? When, when, when you get an understanding of that, you, you tend to want to protect that, not, legal, not legalistically either. You want to protect it. You do those things that, that, that provides you what a God wanted us to have. Rest. <laughs> Amen? That is good. I think we, we forget sometimes that Sabbath means rest. How many of us really take advantage of resting on the Sabbath? Don't raise your hand. Because, listen, if, if, I believe if we took a poll, most of us really don't benefit from the Sabbath. Because what we're doing, we spend that day, guess what, preparing for the whole next week. <laughs> we, we are working, trying to figure out how we're going to take the next week. I wonder what would happen if we truly embraced the Sabbath. That we, that we saw it as a time of rest. I wonder how we would be drawn closer to God. 
if we took it as just a moment to go, whoo, amen? And there's nothing wrong with protecting that. I, I, I mean, I'm hoping that we one, one Theo night that we can really talk about this, that we can go in detail about the Sabbath, what the Sabbath truly means, how to embrace the Sabbath. Because I believe if we begin to embrace the Sabbath where we protect our time, where we, where we protect that space, I believe it'll be fruitful for us. I believe it'll change the way we think. I believe it'll change the way we love. I believe it'll change how we confront one another. I believe there's some power in that. So he tells them that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Then he says, so the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath, even over the Sabbath, even above the Sabbath. So there's something that's happening here. He refers to himself as the son of man. When Christ was referring to himself as the son of man, he is asserting his authority and his mission. He is saying that I am fully divine and I am fully human. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying right here. The son of man is, uh, is Lord even of the Sabbath. While he was truly man, what he was saying is that I'm sharing in human experiences. I'm gonna share in your suffering even unto the point of death. But at the same time, he was saying that I have divine authority and that I have a unique role in God's redemptive plan. He is the only one who's going to live a sinless life. He's the only one that's going to fulfill all righteousness. He's the only one that's going to die on the behalf of the sins of the world. By doing so, what he's saying is that the Sabbath is a day that is meant for restoration and mercy. Are y'all following me? That's what he said. He is the only one. He says the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Y'all missing it. He, he was trying to let him know I am the reason for the Sabbath. I am the reason that you should rest. So you can be drawn closer to me, brothers and sisters, that's good news. That's why I made the statement that I just said, that if you can fully embrace the Sabbath, it'll change the way you think. It, it will cause you to, to, to really love God and love his people. Amen? God, I know, I know, I know. Somebody got to go to work tomorrow. Somebody is already thinking about what's awaiting them tomorrow. Am I wrong? Some, I know at least one person is. <laughs> look, look, at least two people. Can I get another? Can I get another? Because it, 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 it's taking us. We're, we're in such this fast-paced world that we don't ever really take a moment to embrace really what I believe is, a, uh, uh, is the best benefit that God gave us outside of Jesus is to rest in him, that we could rest in him. So the Sabbath day was meant as a time of restoration and to experience God's mercy. Isn't that good news? So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So here it is. I'm almost, I'm almost finished. This is one of the quick, quick um, sermons in this series. All of them won't be this quick, but this one is. So he says, again, again, he enters the synagogue and a man was there with a withered hand. So now at some, at, at some point, wouldn't you just leave Jesus alone? <laughs> it seems like they not giving up. Brothers and sisters, that's how the enemy is. They're not going to quit. They're always on our back. The enemy is always after us. And here's a prime example. Now, Jesus had just told them that he's Lord of the Sabbath. He had just told them that you don't need to mourn, you don't need to fast when the bridegroom is. He had just told them that. Now, Jesus is entering the synagogue. There's a man with a withered hand, and they are not in there. What do you do in the worship, in the synagogue? 
You go to read God's word. You go in there to worship. Instead of going to worship, guess what they're doing? They're watching to see what Jesus is going to do. They're looking to see what Jesus, it says, and they watch Jesus to see rather he would heal him on the Sabbath. Do you think that they wanted to see Jesus heal this man? No. No, they don't care about this man about to get his breakthrough. They don't care about this man who's, who suffered with an ailment for, I don't know how long, but Jesus was about to make it right. They didn't care about that. What they cared about it was that Jesus was about to violate the law and it was happening on the Sabbath. So it says, and they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so they might accuse him. And Jesus, knowing it, Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, come here. Jesus doesn't even entertain these folk. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that good news, brother? Yeah. That nothing will stop Jesus when he attend to bless you. I don't care how folk I act, I don't care what they say about you. If Jesus intends to bless you, guess what's going to happen? You are going to be blessed. Yeah. So here it is. Jesus says, come here. Come here. I, I wonder if he said, come, 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 come. I wonder, I wonder how cool Jesus was. I wonder if Jesus said, yo. Or if he just, whoo -hoo. And the guy went to see Jesus. Jesus says, come here. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or kill? I really, it doesn't matter. I believe that Jesus' mind was already made up. It, this was not a, a question that Jesus wanted them to answer. This is something that Jesus wanted them to ponder in themselves. What is more important, your legalist ways or seeing a man be made whole? Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill it? But they were silent. They were silent because they knew that Jesus was, listen, was smarter than them. Yes. Jesus already knew what they were thinking. So they just, listen, you know how sometimes you ever, my daddy used to tell me, son, when you're caught, just give up. <laughs> this is what was happening here. You caught. You caught, so they silent. They got nothing to say. They can't even get a comeback together. They were up against the ropes. And their arms was too short to box with Jesus. So they were back against the rope. So they just was quiet. So Jesus said to them, but they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger and grieved at the hardness of their hearts. Anger. And grieved. That is, that is something. Jesus is looking. He's looking at him. It's like... I wonder if he's saying in his mind that you're so caught up. You're so caught up in, in, in the law that your brother's in need and you, you're, you're not willing to have it. It broke his heart. He was grieved at the hardness of their hearts and he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. His hand was restored. Jesus just spoke something to him. That's power that, 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 that'll preach by itself right there. That Jesus simply spoke, stretch out your hand. The man with the withered hand, the man with the deformed hand, stretched out his hand and it was made whole. Amen? Yes. That when Jesus shows up, he, he looks at them, but he speaks to him. Amen. He looks at those that were, 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 did not want him to be whole. He looks at them. He was grieved at them. He was angry at them. But he looks at the man that needed a healing and said, stretch out your hand. Amen? Brothers and sisters, I know we are Presbyterian church. But some of us may need to stretch out our hands. <laughs> Amen? Some of us need to stretch out our hands. Some of us need to reach to Jesus. Yeah. So he can make everything all right. Amen. Right. Amen? Amen? So listen. Listen what says next. The Pharisees went out. And immediately. They didn't. They went out without haste. 
and took counsel on, with the Herodians on how they might destroy him. Isn't that something? <laughs> that is something. Jesus is doing nothing but what he came to do, fulfilling the law. Amen? He is the fulfillment of the law. He's telling them over and over that I am the fulfillment. Every law points people to me. So now they say, let's, let's figure out how to destroy him. <laughs> he did nothing wrong. They, listen, they've been trying to trap him. They can't trap him. So now they go out and get help. Hey, how, how are we going to destroy this Jesus? Brothers and sisters, aren't you glad that no trap that they set was able to trap our Jesus? Amen? Amen. That even when it looked like he was trapped, he was not trapped. <laughs> That's good news, brothers and sisters. Well, Jesus says, come unto me. He, he says to this, uh, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come to me. That's all he was saying. He don't want us to be so strapped down trying to follow the law. Amen? Out of, out of legalistic reasons. He wants us to come after him. He is the fulfillment of the law. Brothers and sisters, you and I cannot fulfill the law. If we're guilty of one, we're what? Guilty of them all. You know how our sins are covered? By the blood of Jesus. When he says that I am the son of man, he says, I got you. So what I want us to know, brothers and sisters, is always the right time. It's always the time that we should do what is right. Here's what I want to say, then I'll finish. Both of these passages reveal that the law was given to enhance life, not to diminish it. The law was given to enhance life. Jesus teaches us that love and compassion should always guide our actions. Love and compassion should always guide our actions. He wants us as his followers to know that we need to prioritize the well-being of others just as he did. The Sabbath and all of God's commands should lead us to love God and to love our neighbors. That's it. Listen, the first, listen, the love the Lord your God with all your might, all your soul, all your might, and all your strength. That's one. And the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. So every law, he, that, that fulfills the law, loving God and loving our neighbors. That is it. And we, we, we saw today in our passage that in our law, in our reading, that brothers and sisters, we cannot love God if we don't love our brothers and our sisters. That's important. That's what I want us to get, that we ought not be so caught up in the law, what the law say, what, what Jesus say. What Jesus say, that law is to enhance life. We should not become people who holds people's feet to the law because that would make us look good or because that would make us feel better. Yes, we have laws. I, I, I want to be very clear. We have laws. I don't want nobody breaking in my house. I like, I like that there's a law that t if somebody breaks in my house that something's going to happen to them. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. And if the police don't come, something's going to happen <laughs> before the police come. Uh, uh, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That I'm glad there's a law that doesn't allow me just to run the stop signs. Don't just run out into intersections. I'm glad that there are traffic lights. I'm glad that there are stop signs. You want to know why? Because that enhances life. Amen? It, it, protects, it protects life. I, I, don't, I was a police officer in, in 10 years. I probably only wrote about 10 tickets. But when I wrote a ticket, it was a doozy. <laughs> It was a doozy. He, he, listen, it was because somebody had really violated. If I wrote a ticket, they violated. Amen? It was like they, were, they, they had no concern for human life. So I had to do something to let that person know that this is not okay. Amen? So that's all Jesus, Jesus wants us. Listen, this is not about me. I want to be very clear. This is about Jesus and what he did. I was just using that as an example. Okay, it's about what Jesus did. 
Jesus drew people to him. He wanted people to be drawn to him. He wants us to love God and to love people. So brothers and sisters, we need to know that we need to prioritize people over rules. People over rules. How do we point people to Jesus? How do we allow people to really see Jesus? It's because we let our light shine. I, I've heard somebody say this. Somebody said to this to me last week that we may be the only Jesus that somebody see. We need to allow the light that's in us to shine so we can point people to Jesus. And we need to embrace compassion. We need to embrace compassion, brothers and sisters. We need to be looking for every opportunity to be compassionate to one another. I know, I know my preaching may sound repetitive because it's important. This is important for us to grab a hold of. We, listen, Jesus was repetitive. Jesus' message didn't change. He said it. Listen, I'm the reason for the law. It is to draw people to me. It's to point people to me. Be compassionate. Be kind. Love. Everything that Jesus did was about loving God and loving your neighbors. So everything we ought to be doing as a church is about loving God and loving our neighbors. Listen, we don't do this stuff to gain, gain a right standing with God. We do it because we already have the right standing with God. It's because we're connected to him and because we're connected to him, his spirit flows through us. The Holy Spirit flows through us. It causes us to love people like we should. Amen? Because it's not in us to do it. It's not, man, somebody make you mad. Somebody make you mad, man. It, it, hey, if you don't have the love of God in you, our first thought is to get them back. Or, or that I'm not talking to them no more. You got to have the love of God in you. You got to have the Holy Spirit in you to, to love folk that you know that don't care about you. You got to have the Holy Spirit inside of you to, to talk to people that you know been talking about you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. And listen, we, listen, that is not in any one of us without the Holy Spirit. Let me help you. I know some of us think, you know, I'm all right, I ain't good. Let me tell you something. Without the Holy Spirit, you just like the rest of us. Amen? Deuce, Deuce asked me so, uh, a series of questions this week, Dirty, and when we were together. He asked me a series of questions. He said, Pastor Willie, did you get in a shootout? I said, yes, I did. He said, did, did you shoot somebody? I said, yes, I did. He said, well, did they die? I said, yes, they did. And I thought he would stop. But he kept going. He said, did you ever get in a car chase? I said, yes, I did. He said, did you catch him? I said, yes, I did. He goes, was it fun? I said, it was scary. <laughs> Driving a car 100 miles an hour is scary. I was like, there's nothing fun about that. He says, why do y'all do it? I don't know, man. We had to catch the bad guy. He said, Pastor Willie, one last question. I said, go ahead. He said, did you used to fight? I said, yes, sir. I said, let me tell you something. I fought, but I didn't want to have to fight every day. I said, I, man, I want to talk to people. I wanted people to surrender without having to fight all the time. I wanted them to just put their hands up and let us put the handcuffs on them and walk them into jail. I said, but that didn't happen. He said, you used to fight. And I looked at him, I said, Deuce, you don't want these hands. <laughs> I was like, Deuce, there's some power in these hands. Then we changed the subject. <laughs> So, so what, what I'm saying to us, brothers and sisters, we ought not want to fight all the time. That's the point I want to make. Amen? I can fight. I will fight. But that, I don't want to fight. Amen? So let's embrace compassion. How do we do that? How do we do that? We remember that it was by grace that we were saved. Amen? It is that the compassion of God has not failed us yet. That's what we hold on to. That's what, we, that's what we're after when it comes to the law. It's how can we show God's grace? How can we point people to the one that fulfills every law? Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
the truth of your word and the example that your son Jesus Christ has provided. God, we pray that you would help us to prioritize people over legalism. We ask that you would help us love people over legalism. God, we pray that you will allow us to see the needs of others and respond with compassion and grace. God, we ask you to give us the courage to do what was right even in difficult situations and to honor you in all that we do. Father, we pray for your spirit to guide our actions and our words so that we can reflect your love and your light to everyone that we encounter. Father, we pray that you would remind us daily and provide us with opportunities to do good and to serve others, God, and to glorify your name. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for rest and renewal. We, we ask that you would keep us mindful of, of your true purpose of the Sabbath and all your commandments, God. Help us realize that the purpose of, of, of all the commandments and, and the Sabbath is to be drawn closer to you and closer to one another. We just ask that you would just be with us, God. Guide us, help us to be to be light, God. Help us to, to love like we should, God. Help us not get caught up in us, but help us to get caught up in Jesus. This we pray in his wonderful and masterless name. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters.